This is a tutorial about moments um, which helps us to learn about mechanical engineering later on. Uh, I'm going to go through each question in turn and I'm going to try and follow a fairly consistent set of steps. So question, uh, there are six questions on this tutorial sheet. Each of them is really asking you to calculate a moment given a geometry and a force. Uh, question one looks like this and as in so many cases the first step is to draw out the diagram. Um, I'll try and keep some uh, consistency with the colour coding I use here so we'll mark the force in red um, and uh, I'm also uh, well I'll note that this is 4.5 meters uh, in the question um, then the next thing, the, the first thing to do is just be totally clear where your pivot is. My pivot is this point here, which is called O in the um, question. And that's what we're interested in the rotation around. Um, and then I've suggested in lectures that you might just want to think about uh, the actual point where the force is applied doesn't matter in these moment calculations. What matters is the um, uh, direction of the force. And so we can extend out the line of the force like this. And then again, what I've said is we're looking always for a perpendicular line uh, which, uh, or a, a line which is perpendicular to the direction of the force and which passes through the pivot. And that's this line here in this instance that I've drawn in blue. At that stage, once we've drawn the diagram up like this, uh, things get relatively straightforward. We can say moment equals force times distance, which here equals 300 newtons times 4.5 meters. Uh, I won't, sorry, I won't put units in in these intermediate steps. Uh, and I'll just get my calculator. Uh, 300 times 4.5 is 1,350 newton meters. Um, just thinking about the direction, if I uh, put my pen lid here, if I fix it at the pivot and apply the force, my pen lid moves around uh, like so. And that is in a clockwise direction. It's moving from, uh, well, 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock, and I can mark on there that that's clockwise. In the question we were asked for to find the clockwise moment, uh, that, I guess, means that we should use a negative number for an anti-clockwise moment, positive number for a clockwise moment. So I think that's now a correct answer, and that's question one complete. Uh, question two. Again, start by drawing out the diagram. Uh, this time the directions are slightly different. The um, thing we're interested in looks like this. 12 meters there, 2 meters from there to there. Uh, and there's a force of 1100 newtons uh, marked there. So uh, we know the steps. First of all, we mark on that that is the pivot we're interested in. We note that it doesn't matter where the force is applied. We're simply interested in the direction of the force. So we extend that line out, uh, imagining that it was infinitely long, and then find a perpendicular distance back to the pivot. Uh, so that line that I've drawn on there is at a right angle to the direction of the force and it goes through the pivot and we need to know the length of that line and that's two meters. Um, now I can go on and solve the problem. Uh, moment equals force times distance which equals 1100 times 2 which equals 2200 newton meters and I just need to think about the direction here. Uh, if I um, lay something over this blue line um, and um, 
what I need to do next is fix it at the pivot so I'm fixing it at the bottom end here and then imagine that I'm applying the force and see which way it rotates and it rotates this way and that is anti-clockwise so I can mark on that this is anti-clockwise um, and we'll call that negative 2200 newton meters and again the advantage of uh, making clockwise moments positive and anti-clockwise moments negative is that if we have lots of moments acting um, and we want to sum up all of their effects we just add up the positives and the negatives um, and anti-clockwise will then cancel out clockwise so that's question two complete um, Question three looks like this. Uh, just a reminder while I'm drawing this out that I would encourage you uh, not just to watch what I'm doing here, but actually to, to work along with what I'm doing here um, and try and produce the same results for yourself. Uh, this is 50 centimeters. This length is 25 centimeters. And there's an angle here of 30 degrees. Um, so that's everything that I need there. And then marking on my force. The force is 8 kilonewtons. Um, and the pivot is this point here down at the bottom. Uh, draw out an infinite extension of the uh, of the direction of the force and then find a line at right angles to that which goes through the pivot that's this line here and the length of this blue line that I've just drawn is 50 centimeters plus some bit of that triangle there so let's just look at that triangle on its own we know it looks like this um, this side is 25 centimeters this angle is 30 degrees and we want to find that length there which I'll just mark as X um, that's the right angle in the triangle because this is vertical and that's horizontal uh, and so we can say uh, X is the adjacent side I'll use cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse which equals x over 25 centimeters. Uh, the answer here is going to come out in centimeters and it's sorry I should have said that's cosine 30 degrees. Uh, that's a little bit untidy but um, I'm sure you can see what I mean. Um, and so x equals 25 times cos 30 which equals Uh, 21.65 centimeters um, so the total distance the um, length from force to pivot that's sometimes called the moment arm and it's the length of this blue line here uh, equals 50 centimeters plus 21.65 centimeters which equals 71.65 centimeters which equals uh, 0.717 I'll say meters I've rounded that to three significant figures now and then finally we can do the same thing that we always do moment equals force times distance which equals 8,000 newtons multiplied by 0.717 meters, which equals 5736 uh, is the answer I'm getting. I'm going to make that 5740 newton meters. Um, checking the direction, if I fix the my pen lid at the pivot, and see what effect this force would have it's going to turn it in uh, that kind of uh, direction which is from noon round to one o'clock two o'clock etc 
Um, so that is a clockwise uh, moment and we'll leave it as positive. And that's question three complete. Um, just so everyone can see this second sheet in case you, you want it at some stage. That's what the questions look like on sheet two. So perhaps getting slightly more complicated, uh, number six has that star next to it, which tends to indicate a sort of the kind of question you might expect to get in an exam. Um, so I'll just draw out question four. Uh, we've got um, three millimeters there and 15 millimeters there and a force of 8.7 newtons mark on my pivot and same routine as we've been going through for some time now uh, find a perpendicular line perpendicular to the force which passes through the pivot that's that line there and I think you can see pretty quickly if this is 15 and that's 3 then the length of that line is 12 millimeters uh, 12 millimeters equals 0 0.012 meters and again that's the kind of conversion to get familiar with pretty quick so we can say moment equals force times distance equals 8.7 times 0.012 which equals 0 0.1044 uh, to three significant figures that's 0 0.104 um, newton meters and just checking this um, it's going to rotate my pen lid like that if I just again uh, no, I, I'm somewhat repetitive here but if I lay down my pen lid on the blue line that I've drawn and then fix it at the pivot and allow the force to push it to go around in that direction which is sort of going from uh, six o'clock to three o'clock on a clock face which is anti-clockwise um, and so we represent that as a negative number, negative 0 0.104 newton meters. And that's question four. Uh, question five. Uh, question five is going to get kind of um, interesting here. We'll look at a couple of ideas for it. We might even end up drawing out two diagrams for it because it looks like this um, the length of this rod is five meters um, and then the force that's applied is at a funny angle of 40 degrees and the force is 10 newtons and there are two ways that we can solve this problem um, the first is just to do exactly the same thing that we've done before, um, which is we mark on the pivot, we extend out the line of force to be infinitely long, because we, it doesn't matter where it's applied in this context, and then we find a perpendicular line which is through the pivot, and that's that line there. Um, now we just need to think about our angles. Uh, this, um, I might just redraw this as a, a black dashed line because I'm going to want to refer to it. Uh, the angle between uh, this 10 newton force and the horizontal there is 40 degrees, which means the uh, uh, angle here between the 10 newton force and the horizontal in the other direction is 140 degrees. 
and if you look you'll find uh, since this is a straight line somehow uh, we end up saying that this angle in here is 40 degrees um, and there are, take some time just to justify to yourself that what I've written there is correct you need to remember a few times that a straight line is 180 degrees and then you'll find everything uh, makes sense or perhaps you can um, remember the rules of alternate and corresponding angles and things like that which may also make it make sense um, so once I've got that uh, well I, I need to know this length here um, and I've got now a right angled tri this this X that I've marked on is my lever arm and I've got a, a right angled triangle um, that I'm sort of indicating now uh, so what I can say I know the hypotenuse is 5, that's the side opposite the right angle, and I know the opposite is x, so I can say sine 40 equals x over 5, and therefore x equals 5 times sine 40, which equals 3.2 uh, I'll say 3.21 meters and then we get moment equals force times distance um, which equals 10 times 3.21 which equals 32.1 Newton meters um, and that's a final answer again just checking the direction uh, the force will tend to pull my pen lid like that, uh, which is clockwise. That's going from about 1 o'clock to about 3 o'clock, that kind of thing. Um, and so I'll leave this as a positive number. What I want to do now is just think about um, a similar, uh, exactly the same problem again, but a different way to solve it. And you can really pick which of these you prefer. What I'm going to do before I start anything else is just to look at this triangle that the force is in, um, which has a 40 degree angle, a 10 Newton force, um, and I hope you might remember uh, Varignon's theorem, which says that the moment due to a force at an angle is the sum of the moment due to its horizontal component and its vertical component. So I'm going to work out what this horizontal and vertical components of, of this 10 Newton force are, and then I'm going to go draw those onto my diagram rather than uh, the, the original force at an angle. Uh, let's make sure we're clear that that's a right angle, so 10 is the hypotenuse, and we can say uh, sine 40 equals opposite, which is V, divided by hypotenuse, and therefore v equals 10 times sine 40 which equals 6.427 uh, so 6.43 um, meters and similarly cos 40 equals h over 10 cos 40 is adjacent over hypotenuse uh, so h equals 10 times cos 40, which equals 7.66 meters. Sorry, I've got my unit. Uh, I've confused myself here. Of course, what what this 10 was, uh, maybe I should have marked on units. It was a force with units of newtons. So these two horizontal and vertical components are also forces with units of newtons. So now I'm going to mark those onto my diagram. Uh, the geometry of the problem is still the same. This is still 5 metres. And now we've got two forces acting. Uh, the pivot is still there. Um, we've got one force, which is H, which we know is 7.66 newtons. And another force, which is V, uh, which we know is 6.43 newtons. Um, if I extend out the line of this force, 
then it, all of a sudden this is back to the kinds of things we were doing in question one and, and two um, this force is already acting at right angles to the structure and so this is my uh, perpendicular line sorry I've been drawing that in blue so I should have kept drawing it in blue so that's the moment arm for the 6.43 newton force the 7.66 newton force well if I extend out that line it goes straight through the pivot and really this force is pulling directly away from the pivot so it doesn't create a moment whenever a force is perfectly aligned with the pivot the zero moment so we can make a note zero moment since the force is aligned force goes through the pivot um, so the only moment that's that's the 7.66 that has zero moment and 6.43 the moment arm is 5 meters so we can say moment equals force times distance which equals 5 times 6.43 which equals 32.15 um, which will in this case come out as 32.2 newton meters and again it's um, if we hold the pivot steady and rotate everything according to the force it is still a clockwise moment as before so 32.1 from one way of calculating it, 32.2 from another that's just to do with the way I rounded uh, these numbers here in the um, trigonometric calculations the good news is really we're getting the same answer out from two different ways of solving the same problem the first by understanding the triangles and actually constructing the geometry of the situation and the second by using Varignon's theorem I'll just make a note that that's Varignon's theorem and that's in the lecture slides if you just want to remind yourself what I'm talking about there uh, so that's question five and the last question is question six which looks like this um, So there's one force which acts horizontally at that point at the top and another force which acts here with magnitude 2 kilonewtons and uh, that is at uh, 30 degrees to the um, to the vertical we've already seen I've got a couple of options this force that's at an angle it's not perfectly aligned oh sorry there's one more number that I need to write in that this angle here is 25 degrees um, and that's everything that we're given in the question um, we've already seen that this angle this force here uh, two kilonewtons that's at an angle uh, to the system it's not aligned with horizontal or vertical in the in the way we've set things up just mark on my pivot there um, well I can substitute that using Varignon's theorem just like we did in question 5 and there I can turn it in, I can make it up out of a horizontal and vertical component so it's got a magnitude of 2000 newtons and if I mark on horizontal and vertical and that's 30 degrees I will get I'll do this a bit quicker than I've gone before uh, sine 30 equals opposites over hypotenuse so therefore um, the the opposite which I've called H here is the horizontal uh, is going to be 2000 times sine 30 which equals 1000 newtons 
Uh, I'll calculate the vertical, although I can already see we're probably not going to use it. Um, again, these, uh, these trig calculations will eventually become second nature to you. And that comes out as 1732 newtons. Um, so I can redraw the problem and it's never a bad idea when you've simplified things just to draw out a new simplified diagram, um, which is what I'll do here. So we've got that this 2 kilonewton force can be replaced by 1732 upwards and 1000 to the right and then here we have one thousand sorry one that was one thousand to the left here we have one thousand to the right um, and then the other thing that we can note and we used a similar argument in the previous example this one seven three two the force acts through the pivot so there's no moment from that particular force so keeping going drawing this problem out, now that I've just kind of uh, semi-sketched it, I'm going to take a new page and actually draw out the simplest version of the problem that I can get to. Um, this angle here we agree was 25 degrees. force there of 1000 newtons and there's a force acting there of 1000 newtons. Um, we know this is 3.5, uh, this is 2, which means if I call this side uh, L, we haven't used L yet, so that'll be okay. Just looking at this triangle here, I can say cos 25 equals adjacent over hypotenuse, that's L over 2. So L equals 2 cos 25, which equals 1.81 meters. Um, and then we've got two moments, uh, which we'll have to add up. So moment one, moment equals force times distance, which equals 1,000 times 3.5, which equals 3,500 Newton meters. Uh, that's due to this force here. And sorry, I haven't marked on my pivot, which I should always do. Um, that is going anti-clockwise. So that's going from 12 o'clock, pulling it in the direction of 11 o'clock, anti-clockwise, which is that direction. Um, and we'll say that, it, we'll use a negative number for that, so negative 3,500 newton meters. Uh, moment two, which is the one due to this force here, uh, moment equals force times distance, which equals 1,000 is the magnitude of the force, times it's 3.5 plus L, that's that total length there, 3.5 plus 1.81, and that comes out as 5,310. Uh, newton meters. Uh, and again, just looking at what's happening, this force here is now going to pull things around in that direction, which is clockwise. So correct to stick with a positive number there. Uh, and then finally, we say the total moment equals the sum of all the different moments which are acting, and that's minus 3,500 plus 5,310 
which equals one eight one zero Newton meters and that's positive and that's our final answer so that is the total moment acting uh, in a clockwise direction about the pivot O in question six and that's that uh, question sheet completed uh, so do take the chance to make sure you're totally happy with calculating these kind of moment problems um, it'll definitely be something that you'll get benefit from all the way through your career as an engineer good luck